about uh, 15 years ago, I became aware of uh, a really interesting kind of place, which are these little, which are really just like wet spots in the woods. Uh, sometimes people call them seeps, although the word seeps is often associated with petroleum. Anyway, they're real small springs. Seepage springs is probably the, the best term. And these are, we'll see in a minute, really superficial features, and yet they have the, the same the animals with the same morphology as, as cave animals. And so it's really been a puzzle to try to understand how they colonize this habitat, where they're distributed, and what's exactly what the um, situation is with them. So let me show you what the habitat looks like. Uh, as you can see here, on the surface, there's really no sign that, that there's anything wet. Where I'm walking is very uh, spongy. If you dig down through the leaves, you can find very wet leaves and actually a bit of water. And here we have Hank's isopod. And uh, it, it is not entirely white, as you can see, but is partly uh, depigmented with tiny eyes. This species is almost an indicator of where you have a seepage spring. If you don't have this species, then you're probably dealing with a temporary pond, a vernal pond, rather than a, a, a permanent uh, spot like this. There's a lot of unanswered questions about these. Uh, what their life cycle is like. Uh, uh, is there a, a, a reproductive season? We only occasionally see uh, uh, females carrying eggs. There doesn't seem to be much pattern. Uh, we desperately need a way to sample these without tearing apart the habitat. We also need a way to find the animals during dry periods. Now, in, in theory, we could dig up this whole area, put the, the clay in a big uh, truck, and then filter the clay. That's probably technically possible, but to do that, we would have destroyed one of the uh, pristine habitats for this species, and it's uh, not at all clear that what what we would find. An animal like this, which is blind uh, and depigmented, is extremely vulnerable to any predator. This is an excellent lunch for uh, a dragonfly or a stonefly, some uh, predaceous insect. And now there's a very, very tiny uh, amphipod here that's about two millimeters long and this is in the amphipod genus Stegobromus. Morphologically they have the the syndrome of being living in an environment that's food poor, constant, and without light. But that's not the environment that they live in. What they do live in is a is a environment without light and so we think that light is really the driver for the evolution of this kind of morphology. This is Stegobromus uh, tenuous, and this is the most common of the groundwater amphipods, the seep amphipods. They range up to about uh, 10 millimeters, one centimeter, a little bit more in, in size. They are completely without eyes, completely without pigment, and you can see that they have relatively long antennae and long legs. These amphipods probably move around mostly by, by moving along uh, leaves, but they also probably walk in the habitat as well. They certainly don't swim. There's really no opportunity to swim. They're quite strange animals. They, they, uh, and they wouldn't be strange if they're from a cave, but they, uh, to me, they're very strange from where they were, which is a small seepage spring in Rock Creek Park.